Hey, what's going on? Welcome to Live from the Lesson Studio tonight. Today we're going to take a look at what I call the big 80s rock riffs. There's a certain kind of rock box, we're going to call this, we're going to play out of, and you can start to create your own cool 80s riffs uh, right off the bat here. So what I'm doing, so I'm kind of playing an A power chord type jam. We're just going to call it A5 because it's not really like an A chord. It's a root of fifth and a root. So if I base my jam around this A power chord like this, right, I can start with that. Uh, it's open A, second fret of D, and second fret of G. And for the power chord, I just want to play those three strings. I don't want to play the B string. That makes things kind of happy. That's the major chord. I want the power chord like this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play the low E string on the third fret with my second finger like this. And then I'm going to play the A power chord. So it looks like this. So this is the foundation of a great number of uh, rock, famous rock songs that do this. There's a ton of songs that do this. So I'm playing low E3, and then I'm playing the power chord on A. So what it sounds like this. For our jam. So this, I'm, I'm treating this note with a little bit of a bend here, a little bit of an attitude. And then this rock A power chord. That's a big part of tons of uh, famous rock guitar riffs. I'm going to play a G and then a D. What I'm going to do though, instead of playing G, that you might know a G like this. I call this the rock G. It's low E3, A2, B3, and high E3 like this. And that sounds pretty rocking. It's more rocking than what I call the Sunday School Teacher G like this. The open B string, which has it's um definitely has its place in music. It sounds good to do that too. But for rock, what we want to do uh, is to take our first finger off altogether and fold over the A string. And it gives us a G power chord like this. It's no third, it sounds like this. That's a much more rocking sound. So if we're gonna rock out, we're gonna go. And then we're gonna switch to D, but for D I'm gonna leave my third finger where it is and make a D power chord. So it's open D, G2, and B3. How's it going? If you just joined us, we're doing uh, rock power chords. I call it the big 80s rock box. We're gonna kinda jam out on an A power chord and see if we can create some music. It's really easy to do this, and you can start to create your own tunes like this. So, low E3, slight bend of attitude, rock A, rock G, and then D power chord. Now if you play the high E string, that's cool too, like this. That's the whole chord, but we might be better better suited to play just the power chord. So many tunes do just the power chord, right? So now I'm going to go like the who, right? Or like uh, Aerosmith. Okay, so that's rock A power chord. By the way, I'm using the Fractal Audio FM9, like I always do here live in the lesson studio. And I've got the closest thing I can to my early Eddie Van Halen sound dialed in. So this is as close to Van Halen 1 as I've been able to get with the distortion pedal and kind of tweaking everything uh, in the back end of the program. Uh, you can do a whole lot of stuff on your own with Fractal. You can kind of tailor make everything. In fact, they have virtual amplifier settings. You can do things that you can't even do on the real amp. So you can use like a Variac soak and all these things. So it kind of sounds authentically 80s. However, it's a little wetter. I have the delay that I always have set. There's two delays. There's a delay, delay, delay. And then a multi-delay that goes doom, cha, tuku, cha, kum, cha, and some kind of rhythm back and forth. So it kind of spans the stereo spectrum. I love that sound. When you're playing live, it sort of fills the venue because your guitar is kind of going back and forth. You can hear it. So now I'm going to go my Eddie Van Halen sound. I 
sound is that closest to the uh, Eddie sound I can get. It's that chord. There it is. So there you little dreamer. So anyways, back to our, our, our lesson again. So I have A power chord. And I'm going to play that. G power chord. D power chord. Now let's take another concept here. We're going to play it what I call this big 80s rock box. That's what this lesson is sort of focused on. If I, if I chug the A string like that, and I play the 5th fret of D and the 7th fret of D, this little box right here is a, kind of a gold mine with a billion tunes that do this sort of thing um, from the 70s throughout the 80s, uh, probably the 60s as well. This is a really kind of cool thing. Like um, It definitely happened in the 60s. Like, get ready. Like... Getting ready, cause here I come. So there are songs in the 60s as well, but I'm playing these little caged power chord forms. This is an A form like this, looks like an A, right? Now if I play A here and I go to the fifth fret, it's a C, and the seventh fret is a D. So if I go like this, I can move those forms, it's so simple. It's just a straight line. You can keep going with that all the way up to there if you wanted to, and there's lots of songs that do that. So I'm going to chug my A string. Uh, I'd mentioned before in a previous lesson, if you chug kind of like, let me see what this comment says here. Hi, Drew. Hola, how's it going? Uh, we're talking about 80s, the big 80s rock riffs here. We're trying to do something out of this 80s rock box. So I chug the A string like this. Eighth notes, one and two and three and four and going to do this. That's well, really simple to do. You now, if you combine that with our first little Call that the Van Halen snap. Power chord G, power chord D. We have like the Who song. I can go. Now, when it comes to chugging those rhythms, you can start very simple. You don't have to get complicated. Where you put these rhythms makes a difference. There I went one and two and three and four and one and two and three. Now that's a little complicated because I'm doing syncopation. One and two and three and four and and two and. So if we do that on the downbeat, it'd be more like this. Two and three and four. Two and three. Again, we're just trying to learn how to jam with this. As you learn songs, there's billions of songs that do the same thing. By the way, I'm palm muting with the palm of my hand right here where the bridge meets the string, and I'm chugging like this. It should sound like thunka dunka, mouth wappa dappa. That sounds like a plane flying. Like so it's down here. Starting with quarter notes, or I'm sorry, eighth notes. One and two and three and four and one and three and four and one and two and three and four and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and two and three and four and one. Kind of the first jam here. Then I'm gonna go like this, G to D. It's very simple, right? So there's lots of songs that do this, like Slow Ride. So look, take a look at what he's doing here. It's an A power chord. He's going one and two and three and these up strums. So that's one and two and three and four and one and two and three, four. Now, if you're not comfortable with syncopation yet, 
we're going to work up to that. There's a lot of rhythms that are on the upbeat or the upbeat before the next measure. That gets a little complicated, like... <laughs> That's one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and same thing for Lagrange. It's on the upbeat, but right now let's just do the downbeat. Now we're going to utilize the D string. We have the fifth fret of D and the seventh fret of D. Okay, so this is a little rock box where it's like this. We can go. So we can also do a pinch harmonic. I don't know if you know how to do that yet. I'm taking the, the side of my pick and I'm scraping the string. Making it squeal and squawk. It's called a harmonic. A harmonic is sort of like an overtone. It's like a, a note above the note above the note, sort of like dog whistle notes. And you can create harmonics on guitar like 25 different ways. One of the ways you can do it that was utilized uh, very extensively in the 80s, uh, I guess the 70s as well, still is today. It's called a pinch harmonic where I'm pinching the string. My pick, and as I move from the right to the left, I'm going from a trebly sound. more of a bassy sound down here. So I go. I prefer them on the fatter strings, but they've been done by a lot of great guitar players on the higher strings too. I like it down here. Especially in drop tuning, this low notes, like these low notes, sound amazing. Zach Wilde do, will do a, a pinch harmonic, and it's like, whoa! When you do harmonic, a pinch harmonic, and then you do vibrato, it brings out the overtones and the note just balloons and explodes when you do these pinch harmonics. They sound really cool. So if I go like... So what I'm doing here is I'm playing the G string and the B string together like this. I can do the same thing on the seventh fret too. So that's like... You can do three strings. If you just two two strings instead, it's more like a riff. So if I go five seven and play those two strings together, I'll do that slowly. I want to. I did chicka dan, chicka dan, chicka dan, a chicka, dead strings, chicka. So I go chicka dan, 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 chicka dan. Every little portion of this jam could be its own jam. You can see uh, that you can create tunes from any of these little nuggets, any of these little uh, ditties that you come up with can become songs. This is kind of how you can start to write music. It's not like writing music necessarily like you're writing on a piece of paper. Writing music is um, means that you're creating something. And so even Mozart or Beethoven, they were creating something from uh, a concept that they had. It wasn't just like randomly creating stuff like, I don't know, throwing paint against a wall. This is a harmonic concept where I'm playing a power chord, which is an A5, a root, a fifth, and a root, and a drop two voicing. It's from the caged system. You can check out the caged system on the channel right here. If you don't know how the cage system works, here's another lesson right here, which will show you some of these power chord forms, uh, the little cage system forms, I should say, caged forms to do what I'm doing right now. Let's throw all these in at one time. This is a video right here We'll show you the top five power chord riffs of all time. That's also in line with what we're doing right now. This will help you. Here's a fourth one. Another video right here will show you another 80s rock riff from another live stream that I did. We can throw that one in too. And maybe this one also to learn the pentatonic scales. 
You should learn the pentatonic scales because that will help us with what we're doing right now. It's all kind of combined. I'm playing out of A minor pentatonic in the first position. looks like this. Simply 5-8, I'm sorry, uh, low, low E5, <laughs> low E8, A5, A7, D5, D7, G5, G7, B5, B8, high E5, high E8. So it's fingers 1-4, one, 1-3, one, 1-3, one, 1-4, one, 1-4. One, one, four, one, four. So we can throw that into our jam, absolutely. There's a ton of songs that do that. Rock and Roll Hoochie Coo, uh, Carry On Wayward Son, all these riffs are combining the pentatonic scale with these little rock box riffs I'm doing. I can also do the blues scale too where I add this flat five in like this. So here's our ingredients for our jam. Low E3, power chord, rock G, rock D, a power chord here, C power chord, you can include the A string with these if you want to, D power chord, again I'm showing through A also, and I'm going to chug that with quarter notes, sorry eighth notes, two, on the down beat, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, down, chug it down. Here, hold on a second, I got a comment. What's going on here? Yes, no more buzz. And it's so funny. All I did to fix the buzz was dump the app. <laughs> I'm not using the app anymore. I'm just going directly live and it seems to be working fine. I can't control anything. But you know what? It sounds good to me. So check it out. So I'm going to go. Now, if you want to go to get down, to get down, it's now, another thing you could do is do a little bendy on these two strings like this. very popular thing, not just for rock guys, but also like Jet. Uh, there's bands that play sort of punk music that do the same kind of like little bendy thing on those two strings. But you can also slide up like this. That kind of sounds cool too, right? So now I've got... I'll do the blue scale. Do it slowly. So now I'm going to jam on just that. Now, another cool thing you can do with this, too, is to play this little riff like this. Check it out. I'm going to add the balloon note here on the 8th fret of G instead of playing it just here. You know, like a Jethro Tull blue note, I could do this. That's D7, G5, G7, G8, B5. Such a cool sound to throw in the middle of this jam, right? So I got. Hold on a second, I got the comments there. Thank you. Yep, I, I love the 80s stuff. I am a product of the 80s, for better or for worse. Um, when I grew up, a huge Van Halen fan from day one, like I was sold, and uh, 
I love the MTV era stuff. Like I was a jazz guitar major in college, so I kind of chilled out and learned how to play jazz. And now I play in wedding bands and I play, I think it's like the Hendrix show is probably like the, the strength of my playing. Original music is uh, kind of jazz, blues, rock, but the 80s is like right there. Like I, I always have it in me. And so when I pick up the guitar and I just start jamming, it just kind of comes out. And I've been doing these 80s jams like this for years and years and years. When I was a kid, there was a guy in a local music store that I used to watch play guitar all the time. And I didn't have a job and nothing else to do. So I'd watch him play for like, I don't know, six hours at a time. And I'd go home and try to remember what he did and piece it all together. And I sort of learned at that point that you can jam and create music out of nothing. Rip some Van Halen. Sure, what tune do you want to hear? <laughs> I can't do the Wayne Bar thing because I don't have it. So what I'm going to do is play the B string because he does a, a B dive bomb. So I'll play the B note here. He's also two down a half step. There's some Panama for you. Yeah, Van Halen's great. Um, absolutely. The king, right? That's such an amazing guitarist. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add this blue note in like this. Nor a blue scale. I can do this. So I can go. Such a cool sound. Now Van Halen would do that with open strings. That's a cool sound too. Now let's get our chugging going with, with uh, 16th notes instead of 8th notes. Let's go. The Randy Rhodes thing, right? Like, more like Randy Rhodes sound. Now we'll do the same chords. downbeat for now. Let's add another element into our jam. Let's add the CAD 9 like this. Here, let's see what this comment is from. Oh, you're absolutely welcome. Um, I, I, I um, thank you for watching the video. I, I, I love uh, teaching and I've been teaching private lessons all day and I'm still in this room. Like every day that I teach or all well, gigs too or anything, breaking away from the guitar is really hard for me. Going back to the regular life, going back to like, it, I have a good life, right? But w when I'm done at the end of the day, I just want to keep going. And that's why I love this live stream because for years when I'm done, when I've been done teaching, I've just wanted to, kind of just hang out and play guitar and, and now I have a vehicle to do that so that's pretty awesome. Just keep throwing requests at me. Anything you want to learn, any questions you have about anything that has anything to do with guitar, uh, let me know because that's what I'm here for. So we're going to throw a C add 9 in like this. And then we're going to throw a G over B like this. So we're going to go like this. Right? Rock G. Rock G. Three, four, we play C at nine. So 
So every one of these jams is going to sound like an actual song because when these guys wrote these songs, that's what they were doing, right? So if I go two, three, four, two, three, four. Now, let's throw in an E7 sharp 9. This is like the Hendrix chord. I'm sure you've heard of the Hendrix chord. It's open low E, second finger on A5, first finger on D, uh, sorry, second finger on A7, first finger D6, third finger G7, fourth finger B8. It's like this, 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 and this. It's an E7 with a sharp 9. By the way, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe to the Lesson Channel. There's tons of videos over there, and if anything you want me to teach, leave comments in the comment section down below, or you can comment during the live stream uh, videos. I'm here to help you learn, so any questions you have, just throw them my way. I really uh, kind of do that all day long. I'm like the, the baseball player in the Field of Dreams, right, with Kevin Costner in the movie, and he walks off the field with his bag and helps the, the doctor. Hold on a second. Yes, I'm in. I'm in. Um, I play in multiple uh, wedding wedding bands. Uh, a lot of different uh, scenarios. Pretty much like I'm playing Saturday, and uh, it's a great gig. You have to know so much stuff. Like my first day of a wedding band was absolutely terrifying. Let's see. Definition of a sharp nine is Jimi Hendrix. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so the, the wedding bands are great, though, because it kind of forces you to learn songs, song after song after song after song. There's like a thousand songs that you kind of have to get under your belt for your standard wedding uh, repertoire. So at the very first kind of time you do it is, is, is petrifying. But over the course of time, you start learning all those songs. And then it's a whole lot of fun. Like I love playing dance music for people. And everybody at a wedding is in a good mood and they're all having fun and they're all partying. So it's not like you're playing for like a bunch of like I don't know, really drunk, tired people. They're definitely having fun. So E7 sharp nine looks like this. If I play that. Like, you know, sort of like your uh, you know. Wawa pedals right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to incorporate this E7 sharp 9 into my jam. So we have this. Sort of like your... That's better if you have a single coil sound like this. That's another tune that's based exactly on this same thing. See, there's a theme going on here, isn't there? Even if, even if I play it like a... Sounds like uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, Transformers from the 80s, right? When it's like... Something like that. Then it throws in a little... their gym. So now I'm going to go like this.
One second here. 2,000 subs. Yes, 2,000 subscribers is on the horizon. So uh, tell your friends and family. Have your dog subscribe. Give them, give them a YouTube channel. I'm kidding. If the YouTube gods are listening, I'm just teasing. So anyways, don't give your dog a YouTube channel. It's totally a joke. Ha ha. So anyways, so rock. G to D. And then chug. Three and four and four. And another cool thing you can do is let the chords ring out while you're chugging. Check it out. So you can kind of see how this could be a song, right? It sounds like something from the white uh, from White Snake or something like. Keep on pushing me like I've never known before. These jams are all kind of the same. Yes, sir. I'm I'm pushing it now. I really want to. I really want that to happen. So, any requests you got, let me know, and, and I'll I can make uh, the songs you want to learn. A couple of cool ideas on the horizon. The next video that's coming out is uh, like real live, like not live stream, but full length videos coming out is uh, Knock on Wood. That's a good song, Knock on Wood. Is that the song you're saying, or just like for luck? I love Knock on Wood. So I'm doing a video on um, on how to, what to practice, like what you should be practicing. It talks about what you should be practicing if you're kind of like a beginner or a campfire player, what to be practicing if you're trying to get into a band, and that's what you, where you want to be, and, and fo uh, focusing on how to make that happen. And then also what to practice if you want to do this for your career, and if you really want to play guitar for a living, what you need to know to make this happen so you can do this for your job because there's an awful lot of stuff to learn but um, if you know exactly what to do you can make a clear-cut path to get where you need to be without having to learn a bunch of stuff you don't necessarily need right so check it out so if I go like this end of my little jam where I get this note There it is. Now the E7 has its own box. If you take the A box like this, and you, and you switch over to E minor pentatonic instead, like this. That's its own thing, too. I'll do that slowly. do a fake wah wah pedal with your pick like this. I heard uh, read I heard a story that Roy Buchanan was like mad when the wah wah pedal came. Here's my wah wah pedal for my live show. Right? Roy Buchanan was mad because the wah wah pedal was created because he was doing it with his fingers first. Pretty close, right? Here's the real one. Here's this one. Rather, rather close, I think, if I go like. In the white room with black curtains. It's the station 
Back of country and local pavements, diet stallings. Kirk Hammett. <laughs> it's funny. I saw a meme the other day that showed uh, the different um, things that were associated with a, with the guitar players, like the guitars. Like there was the Steve Vai guitar was a certain kind of guitar, and there was a guitar for Eddie Van Halen. Uh, very, yo, yeah, absolutely. And so, and then there was all, all these guitars for all these famous guitar players. Like Jimmy Page had a Les Paul, which you probably should have had Telecaster. It's a different story. And for Kirk Hammett, they had a wah wah pedal. No guitar, just a wah wah pedal. It's funny. Yes, the wah wah pedal is reigns supreme in Kirk Hammett's world. So now, here's our jam. <laughs> Now the next thing I'm doing is something called a pedal tone. I'm going like low, high, low, high, low, high. Check it out if I go. It's like open seven, open five, open seven, open five. Can do open seven, open six, open five on the same string. Down picks or alternate picking. Kind of sounds like Tom Petty, right? So if I do this. Now, I'm kind of cooking here a little bit. So what I want to do, I, I, and to create music, like when I uh, composed the Bolt Horizon record, the most recent record, or, or the J.D. Sherman record, I've made three records so far. And for all the tunes that I create, they always kind of start off with some kind of jam. So you can create music from a jam, you can create music from lyrics, you can create music from a melody you have in your head. Um, Jimi Hendrix would be proud. I hope so. I think Jimi Hendrix is the best of the best. I don't know. It was it was more about his rhythm playing than the soloing too. I, I loved his rhythm playing, and I think it's uh, absolutely great. And um, the whole little wing concept, like learning how to little wing, if we we'll call it like a verb to little wing, is huge. It's a big part of what I do. Um, the whole philosophy of moving through the fretboard with the, that kind of thing. So what we want to do then uh, is do this um, pedal tone thing. Here I went like. Well, that's a big move right there. I'm playing the pentatonic scale in E this time with a blue note also. Check it out. If I go. What I'm trying to do in these live stream lessons is to slow down the stuff that you hear that maybe you're not sure what you're hearing and how they're doing it. And um, <clears throat> I think it's a big thing. One of the great things about guitar is that you can watch somebody play, right? And you're seeing what I'm doing and I'm like a mirror image. So if you have your guitar in your hand, you can emulate what I'm doing. And if, if, the, if somebody like slows the thing down and gives you a chance to see what's, what's happening, sort of these like inside secrets, I guess, it's really not that complicated when you break it all down. So if I play this scale like this, do that here, it's here. That's a cool blues sound too, if you look at like Pride and Joy when it goes. Oh, 
like a turnaround. That's another cool sound. So it's also like in like, like a. Walk this way. So that's a really cool little trick right there. Oh, instrumental version of music. Yeah, it's great to hear an instrumental version of something and get the lyrics out of the way. That's why I create instrumental music. I don't, I mean, David Lee Roth said if you want to send a message, use Western Union. So. I'm not the big. I'm not the world's greatest lyrics guy. Like I love Rush, and I think Neil Peart's writing was great. But I'm going to stick to trying to write tunes with with you know music. So let's put some of this together here. So we have this first thing, rock A power chord. What I call the rock G. I'm not playing a G like this. I call this the rock G, right? I have the B string also because there's an added fifth. It's a root, a third, a fifth, a root, another fifth, and a root versus a third like this, which has its place. This also does too, and a folk G looks like this. This is a rock G, right? But if you take off your first finger and fold over the A string, it's much cooler. It's a power chord like this. If I play like... All these tunes are kind of doing the same thing, aren't they? See the similarities there? So if I play this, now I'm an A and I go, my C four. And then I can go out of the little rock box, like the name of the video here, pedal tone. You want to get a groove going, but you can hear the drums, right? So kind of play like you're listening to a drummer, even though you're not. So you're not just kind of like meandering. There's nothing wrong with that too. A lot of times when you practice, you can practice without any sense of rhythm. If I want to play something like a cadenza, something pretty. I'm not really paying attention to rhythm, I'm just playing. I'm playing to the sound of the guitar that I have right now. I've got this Marshall sound hooked up. So it's going to sound better for like this. Sounds better for like the Jimi Hendrix thing, like the Red House thing, than it does for maybe something jazzy. Like you kind of play to your sound. This Marshall sound is really kind of grindy and gritty. So your playing sort of follows that. It's interesting. But I'm trying to keep a beat versus just playing uh, like a soaring melody, like some of the other videos here. I'm trying to keep a steady, so you can hear a drum set. One and two and three and four, right? Sort of like, you know, like a... Nobody gonna take my car, I'm gonna race it to the ground. So I want that same kind of steady rhythm when I'm jamming with my own jam, right? So I'm gonna kind of like get Highway Star in my head here and I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that and I'm going to put that into this jam. Let's see if we can do that. Get that rhythm going. Here. It's using the same ingredients, nothing special. I've purposely not put anything else in the jam. I'm just playing exactly what we're talking about. Nothing fancy, nothing extra, nothing that I haven't talked about. Just the same core things we're doing. The rock A snap. Rock G, rock D power chord, chugging A, eighth notes, 16th notes. 
or like before, if you look at the 80s uh, video I did on the Drop D video on the on live stream a couple weeks ago, I was talking about Tippy T and T Tippy as the two prominent right hand rhythms for rock. T Tippy is more like Iron Maiden. <laughs> And Tippy T is more like Holy Diver. Like, no, sorry, Holy Diver is Tippy T. Tippy T is more like Metallica. Of course, they're doing that with all downs. I'm not quite that steadily. If I go like. What you want to do is chug to the point where your right hand becomes metronomic. We can kind of just chug for like a straight hour, which, you know, it's fun to do. Let's see what this says here. These things disappear quickly. Getting better though at chugging. Yeah, so start with a slower metronome marking. Um, I always refer to the metronome as sort of like your sleep number, like the sleep number bed. You want to have a certain tempo that you're able to do things, whether it's soloing. If you can chug 16th notes at 100 beats per minute, do that for a week and then try 101 and try 102. It takes some time. And I also re definitely recommend uh, the prominent first chug, like the first of the, of the sequence. To be accented. So you can lock into that. So when you're going really, 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 really fast, all you're hearing is that first of each four. Like so I'm doing that. We're like I'm sharing. Look a book a book a digga digga. but I'm playing four times faster and maybe even eight times faster at certain uh, speeds but again the amplifier that you're playing out of dictates what you can do this Marshall sound that Eddie had in the 80s that I've kind of dialed in here is kind of a little more wide open it sounds great for him yes But it doesn't really, it's not very articulate when it comes to playing really fast. This amp is not very round. It's not very, it's not meaty. It doesn't have a lot of like, um, that kind of something to grab onto. It's almost like a, walking on a tightrope. What certain guitar tones are more like a tightrope where you're kind of like above the ravine and you're trying to keep your balance and you're looking down and you're like, oh, because there's not a lot of stuff to grip onto. This is this Marshall sound is kind of gritty sounding. So here's the jam. Van Halen snap like this. If you just join me, I'm talking about creating a jam with this 80s rock box and there's key ingredients we can do. It's very simple. And if you can keep a beat and a groove going, you can create songs like this and this is the way that tons of songs have been created check it out a power port rock g notice i'm not playing the a string i'm taking my first finger out of the equation to do a power chord to a d power chord and the third finger stays down it's a common tone so i got you like the who Chugging. And we're going to add this A form like this. To the fifth fret, to the seventh fret. Kind of like Randy Rose. So if I go this, this, and this, and chug it with quarter notes, or sorry, eighth notes, on, and on the downbeat first. Find it with this. On this note, you want to give it a little attitude. To this, to this. And then venture to the eighth fret. I 
I could do just the D string alone with the A string like this. Seventh fret of or the fifth fret and the seventh fret of the G and B string. Slightly bend those. Pinch harmonic. Another ingredient is this blue scale. A minor pentatonic scale. Flat five. The flat five here too. Now remember, there's tons of stuff we can do, but as soon as you change some of these ingredients, you're sort of changing the genre, right? If you change things too far, and then you're playing rockabilly, or you're playing blues, or you're playing surf music, or you're playing disco. It's kind of interesting how these languages are so similar. So I'm staying within the parameters of this jam right now to keep everything consistent so it sounds like the 80s, because then there's like, like a playbook, like a certain vocabulary that those guitar players were using. Uh, I'm only touching upon the surface. I mean, there's lots of other variances and examples, like Reb Beach from Winger did a lot of really cool experimental stuff and took things pretty far doing these jams. But like the key ingredients were there. And then you like uh, Warren Martini from Rat. Man, some great riffs in Rat, right? They're some of the best ever riffs, but they're still kind of based on the same kind of foundational thing, depending on what key you're in. Right now we're playing in the A power chord kind of realm. It's not really a key, it's more like an environment because they're breaking a lot of rules as far as the key goes. It's more Mixolydian than anything. It's not really major. It's like an A Mixolydian thing we're living in. If I do this, and this, and this, and then the C at nine, G over B. That's so cool. So that's like uh, mental health, right? When he goes like. Based out of the exact same box. Then he goes like. Or like. All the same. Then if I go like this, E7 sharp nine comes. In. That's really cool. A7, D6, G7, D8. So I go low E string, and then do this sort of like pedal toe thing. Now I'm playing E blue scale, as opposed to A blue scale. And, and you can definitely, like if you look at the Beatles songs, like uh, Jordan's a huge Beatles fan, a lot of the songs in music in general will, will do something a fourth higher and do the same thing, right? So if I do this, or lower, for example, if I go... There you go, so... Like a... So when I'm teaching lessons and, and all the millions of songs that come my way, I'm always trying to figure out what's going on theoretically and how the song works, because then you can sort of like learn the next song so much more quickly. You don't have to uh, really think about it because it's formulaic, right? These are all formulaic things. They're all sort of following a format, depending on whatever genre you're playing, whether it's the wedding band stuff or the jazz stuff, or the blues stuff, uh, any style, there's a certain... Um, certain group of things you can use that work, right? And then there's also some things that are the, uh, universal, like the fourth. That's like, kind of thing like that. So listen for that too, like if the riff's the fourth higher. So now I'm going to kind of put all these ingredients together and jam a little bit and let's see what, we, what happens. Hold on a second, I got to these disappear really quickly. Yes, the most successful band of all time is Spinal Tap. No, I'm kidding. Definitely the Beatles for sure. Um, man, if I if I had to say to somebody like, how do you learn how to write music? I would just say learn every Beatles song and understand them all, and then go from there because that's that's for sure. And I I think they're gems, and I always love learning Beatles music when it comes my way. I'm always excited. Like can, somebody brings a Beatles song in for lessons, I'm like. Beatles. It's fun. Here we go. Thank you. 
Now, another thing we can do too is start to implement some of the other caged forms as well. I haven't done any of those, but any of the caged forms will absolutely work for these jams. If I go like back to the Van Halen thing. Now, this is the A form we've been doing, right? But now I can do a C form. C looks like this. Move it up the neck, you get like a. There she stood. Like, that's like a very common thing to do. So that's what Eddie did when he was like. Now you gotta learn how to take these two fingers and put them down together at the same time. It's a bit of a trick. Now I have the wrong sound out up here, but this is like a, if I do like. That whole thing is a big thing. So now I have A form, the C form, right? The D form is also super cool, like this. I go like. The, like Jakey Lee thing. The D form is big too, and then the E form is huge too. Of course, so I can do this. There it is. If I go like. So as you're learning these riffs, uh, pay attention to what caged form the songs are based out of because you can very easily figure out how to play all these songs. They're all kind of the same, right? You got these caged forms. I'm doing the D, G, and B strings together. These disappear quickly. Corn. So you liked corn, but now you like Django and the Beatles. That's interesting. Django Reinhardt, for those of you who don't know, was a gypsy jazz guitar giant like 80 or 90, I guess 90 years ago now. He and Charlie Christian were phenomenal guitar players back in the 30s. Check out Django Reinhardt and um, it's all harmonic minor stuff. It sounds like like Ingve with swing. It's really, really cool. So now I'm going to throw some of these power chord forms or cage forms in too, like this. So another cool thing you can do is you can texturalize with your right hand to do this sort of thing. the G form also. I don't know if I can name my favorite band. I'm not really sure who my favorite band is. Like, I love Led Zeppelin. I love Steely Dan. Rush, um, well, it's really hard to say. Pink Floyd, Dave Matthews Band. For today, that's my list for today. But it'll change tomorrow. So much great music. It's. It, it, I don't even know if I can even say my favorite anything. Favorite guitar player either. I'm not sure. <laughs> Check it out. For all of you who are listening right now, why don't you record yourself doing some jams like this and put them in the comment section of the video? That would be so cool. I can see what you guys are up to. Do some of these ideas and throw them back at me. Let me see what they look like. So here's a kind of a culmination of everything so far.
Now, isn't that fun? Well, thank you so much for hanging out with me tonight. I probably should get going. I appreciate you being here. If you haven't subscribed already, please do. Uh, I'm on the live stream here after lessons. I teach Monday through Thursday, so I hop on a lot. Keep an eye out for it and uh, hang out on the channel. If you have any songs you want me to teach on the channel, let me know. Just throw some requests my way. And it's great to, ha great to have you here. Um, I had a lot of fun doing these 80s uh, rock rhythms. And if you have anything you want me to do in the live stream, just put it in the comment section and I'll try to cover uh, your, your requests. All right, because have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much.